The Marvel Cinematic Universe Phase 4 is coming to a close, and the threat of the time-traveling, multiverse-hopping Kang the Conqueror looms in the near future. With MCU movies and series like Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness and Loki, each blowing the doors wide open for alternate universes, Earth's timelines and dimensions, as well as the confirmation of Phase 5 and 6 building up to the eventual Avengers Secret Wars, fans are eager to continue their exploration into Marvel's infinite multiverse and all that it has to offer. It's complicated, okay? In this video, as we do, we will cover and probably speculate further upon everything we know about the MCU multiverse so far. All that being said, time is of the essence, so why waste any more of it? Let's go ahead and dive right into it. As explained more thoroughly by He Who Remains, portrayed by Jonathan Majors, yes! Yes! during the tail end of season one of the Loki series, there is, was, and will be a multiversal war happening inside of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, an all-out conflict taking place across the entire multiverse between several variants of Nathaniel Richards. See, Nathaniel Richards is, or was depending on how you look at things, a brilliant scientist and inventor, dubbed Kang the Conqueror. After discovering the existence of the multiverse, Richards set out to conquer as many alternate universes as he could. Eventually, some variants of Kang would team up against other variants and an all-out battle would ensue where, ultimately, the Kang variants fought in one-on-one -on -one contests, placing their respective universes on the line. In contrast, another one of Richard's variants used the moniker of He Who Remains, who was able to weaponize a trans-temporal entity known as the Eliath and put a temporary end to the war. He Who Remains then founded and ruled over the Time Variance Authority in an effort to preserve the main MCU timeline properly referred to as the Sacred Timeline. Residing at the Citadel at the end of time for eons, he who remains would be confronted by Loki and Sylvie, who actually killed him, bringing about seemingly a new main timeline in which it is Kang who rules over the TVA. Can the Avengers stop the imminent threat of Kang the Conqueror headed their way? Only time will tell. As mentioned in the previous entry, He Who Remains put an end to the Multiversal War and created the Time Variance Authority, or TVA, all in order to preserve the sanctity of the Sacred Timeline. The Sacred Timeline is essentially the main MCU timeline that we have been following thus far, and although not explicitly stated, it appears as though every other universe across the multiverse spurns off of this timeline in some capacity. It is imperative to He Who Remains that the Sacred Timeline follows a strict script, meaning its inhabitants do not truly possess free will. The reason for this is because if somebody happens to make a choice that causes a new branch in the timeline, known as a divergence, then this reality would stray too far away from the sacred path. This is where the TVA comes into play, as their job is to prune these branches before they reach the point of no return, since after that the timelines could no longer be reset. He Who Remains collects a series of incredibly similar realities in which only he is born in order to prevent Kang the Conqueror's return and the multiversal war from happening. Unfortunately, he's gone now, and Kang is on his way. If he isn't already here, that is. The Nexus of All Realities is a cross-dimensional gateway that allows access to all possible realities, an illuminated and endless maze that infinitely extends in all directions. The walls are made of reflective shards that contain infinite variations of MCU's prime universe. The Nexus itself allows time travel without affecting the future of the visitor's timeline. So instead of causing a Nexus event, which we'll discuss in a moment here, the Nexus of All Realities will simply create a new and nearly identical timeline branch. I really hope that you're following me, this can get a little confusing. As seen in the Disney Plus animated series What If, Watu the Watcher resided in the Nexus in order to observe all of the newly created alternate universes. Ultimately, a variant of Ultron would battle Watu in the Nexus, causing the Watcher to assemble his own team of variant superheroes, dubbed the Guardians of the Multiverse. Nexus beings are rare individuals with the ability to alter the flow of the universal time stream, and thus the future as a whole. The best examples of Nexus beings inside of the Marvel Cinematic Universe would be characters such as Scarlet Witch or Kang the Conqueror himself. Nexus beings are keystones of the multiverse and are crucial to its coherence and stability. Furthermore, Nexus beings are consistently and vigilantly being watched over by the likes of the TVA, for fear of any temporal changes one might cause, whether on purpose or by mistake. These alterations to the timelines are known as Nexus events. Speaking of which... No. No. Nexus events are essentially any moment, intentional or not, that deviates from He Who Remains' sacred timeline. 
For example, Loki stealing the Tesseract back in 2012 after the Battle of New York during the first Avengers film triggered the events of the Trickster Prince's titular Disney Plus series, which in essence was one giant Nexus event. In layman's terms, a Nexus event is a circumstance in time that shouldn't happen. Not to be confused with absolute points, another term which we will clearly define here in a second, a Nexus event refers to the act necessary for a change or divergence to take place in the timeline. Nexus events are man-made incidents, and ultimately it is he who remains who decides what constitutes Nexus events. I've lived. Nexus events effectively describe the act of changing the timeline. Absolute points describe the act that cannot be changed itself. An absolute point is an inevitable occurrence that the universe is responsible for and creates to protect itself. The best example of this would be the unstoppable death of Christine Palmer which is the catalyst in Doctor Strange studying and mastering the mystic arts. If an absolute point is altered in any facet, the universe will naturally correct itself in another manner. For instance, after attempting to prevent her death, which happens in a car wreck numerous times by jumping back in time over and over again, Doctor Strange would try simply standing Christine up so that she never leaves her home. Well, he found out that her apartment exploded and she perished regardless. The universe needs Stephen Strange to become Sorcerer Supreme in order to preserve the timeline and will always find a way to fix or create absolute points throughout history to guarantee that that happens. Mm, that's the gambit. The gap junction is the plane that exists outside of and surrounding the space-time of a universe. Waypoints use the gap junction realm to travel between timelines and universes. America Chavez's powers render her capable of creating waypoints in the form of star-shaped portals, which allow her to access the Gap Junction. Waypoints can also be created using magic and spells, and I'm willing to bet that the Gap Junction will be accessible via technology eventually, if it isn't already. Perhaps this is how the new Avengers team will travel to different missions across time and space moving forward within the MCU. Everybody knows what time travel is and means. Temporal manipulations created naturally or manually which allows someone to travel either forwards or backwards throughout time and space. In the Marvel Cinematic Universe, we have learned that time travel is highly likely to provoke or create branches and nexus events stemming from the sacred timeline. As seen during the events of Avengers Endgame, after killing current timeline Thanos, and when going back in time to prevent the snap altogether, we are introduced to the alternate past timeline Thanos, who the final battle for Earth is ultimately fought against. Of course, we have also seen Earth's Mightiest Heroes use the Quantum Realm in order to time travel, and obviously there are time manipulation spells and enchantments accessible to sorcerers and magic users. Yet another means by which we have seen characters inside of the MCU traverse the vastness of the multiverse, Dreamwalking is achieved by casting a spell found in the Darkhold. Dreamwalking allows a spellcaster to temporarily, and potentially indefinitely, control the body and mind of a variant in another universe. This means you can effectively live the life of your alternate universe self, and that is precisely what Wanda Maximoff, aka the Scarlet Witch, was doing low-key for some time before Doctor Strange successfully stopped her. A variant is a term coined by the Time Variance Authority to describe a person who does something that they're not supposed to, causing branches of alternate events. However, in general, the term also applies to one's multiversal counterparts. We have seen Loki variants in the form of children, old men, and even alligators. That's alligator for growling. We have seen variants of Captain America fighting himself, variants of Peggy Carter who became a captain herself, sinister versions of Doctor Strange, and of course, all of the Spider-Men during No Way Home. <laughs> Variants will probably be a major key to Kang Dynasty and Secret Wars, as the Avengers will surely seek help from their past, future, and alternate selves in order to defeat the Conqueror or Conquerors. Here's the thing about alternate universes though. That means that all cartoons were, are, and will be technically canon to the Marvel Cinematic Universe in some capacity. During the events of the Doctor Strange sequel, while traveling across the multiverse, Doctor Strange and America Chavez pass through both an animated universe and a blob of paint goo universe. This means there are a myriad of universes with incredibly obscure and unique qualities. So it's free in most universes actually. Including cartoon ones. Furthermore, we have seen more than one version of Captain Peggy Carter on both Earth 838 and during What If. We have even seen Doctor Strange confront a version of Sinister Strange, a character who was also introduced to us during What If. During Phase 4 of the MCU, we were finally introduced to mutants, and even got to meet a member of the Fantastic Four, albeit on Earth 838 as opposed to the Prime Earth. 
founder of the X-Men, Professor Charles Xavier, as portrayed by Sir Patrick Stewart, and Reed Richards, played by John Krasinski, both made appearances and were unfortunately decimated at the hands of the Scarlet Witch. With Marvel Studios confirming a Fantastic Four film set for Phase 6 and an X-Men movie anticipated by fans for, you know, some point in the future, the likelihood that most of the characters who fill out these respective rosters already exist is fairly high. As revealed during a post credit scene of Thor Love and Thunder, an afterlife realm does officially exist inside of the MCU, meaning there are probably plenty of others. Valhalla is basically the equivalent of heaven for Asgardians. Not only was Jane Foster greeted in Valhalla upon her death, but it was Heimdall who welcomed her. It should be noted that, at the time of this recording, it is all but confirmed that Sasha Baron Cohen has been cast to play Mephisto in the Ironheart series slated for Phase 5. Mephisto, of course, rules over the pocket dimension called Hell indicating that we will be visiting themes of the afterlife even further. Once again examining Thor Love and Thunder, the film's final battle would end with Gore the God Butcher and Thor inside a realm that contains one of the cosmic entities called Eternity, accessed by passing through the Gates of Eternity. It is said that if you can locate Eternity, you may ask for one wish. Gore gives his life and wishes for the resurrection of his daughter Love, who Thor then adopts as his own. The significance lies in the fact that if Eternity exists, then so does their sister and celestial counterpart, Infinity. Although they may act as and are identified as separate entities, together Eternity and Infinity combine as the abstract and bodiless embodiment of the entire universe. And lastly, let's talk about incursions. An incursion is the potential result of prolonged multiversal or time travel that can cause one or more universes to be entirely destroyed at the same time. It is possible to stop an incursion by prematurely destroying another universe's Earth. With variants and incursions being all the rage right now, one of these incursions will surely be the focus of the upcoming Kang Dynasty and Secret Wars movies, reshaping the future of the MCU as we know it. And there you have it, a lot of stuff that we know about the multiverse so far. What are your predictions for phases 5 and 6? Let us know in the comments, and while you're down there, why not go ahead and hit the like and subscribe buttons and enable notifications for more multiverse conquering comic content.